ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಭರ್ದ my village had a cricket tournament now a lot of people and particular other creators who follow my channel and i speak to quite often have been asking me to do story times so like, dude you've got all these mad stories you could be telling people um some of them would do really well i know of crazy stuff that's happened so it's like i've got so many stories to tell this channel's always been dedicated to the memory of my father i felt it would be fitting to tell a story about him, start story times with a story about him. I'm kind of struggling to tell you guys this because I heard a story about my dad and I found out when somebody popped by to do their condolences from the village and it was someone who essentially grown up around my dad and knew my dad before he came to England and this story is from way before he even thought about coming to England. He never told my sister, he's never told my mum and he's never told me this story and I've been struggling with myself and questioning myself as to whether I should tell anyone this story or should I keep it to myself. Now I don't know if he'd appreciate me telling people this, maybe he didn't tell us because he didn't want us to know this. Um, and um, something my mother's neighbour said to me back in England is that it's such a shame the tradition of oral storytelling has kind of died out and that people don't pass on stories about the generations, about the family through conversation or through you no know, story time, essentially just sitting there around one another and I want to tell something about my dad that tells you the type of person my dad really was. And you know what, I remember when the story was told to me in the first place, it's like, I've never heard that before. And I've, I've heard some stories about my dad, and my dad's told me some stories too. Yeah, I was just, I was taken aback for a minute, and I was taking it all in, and I was just thinking, was this story true or not? Because dad never told me this. And I didn't say anything to anyone, I kind of just kept it to myself. And then, when I went back this year, like the story came back out again and it was and it was like even more and you know the story came back out and somebody else told me this story about my dad and I sat there thinking to myself like maybe this is actually a legit story because everyone's story for once in India seems to pretty much be the same around this topic it's something that happened or that he was involved with actually before he left India for England. So as you notice that field's full of boys from different villages and men as well from different villages. You've got people on the rooftop of the school. I don't really get it. If there's any India law experts, please educate me and let me know why this is. But when you have a field in, in Punjab in particular, once someone takes a tractor and plows that, that ground, now all of a sudden the person who plowed that land, it belongs to them. So I don't know why that happens or what, what the story is behind that. That particular ground is communal use only. So that means there are certain areas within a village where no one else can touch it, but it's there for the community to be able to organize events. Sometimes in another area, there's parts where you bury people, but that is meant to be untouched by anyone. It's not meant to be farmed, it's not meant to be rented out. It's there for the community to be able to congregate and do stuff, do positive things, okay? So this would have happened in his early 20s, maybe he was like 21, 22 at the time. My dad lost his dad while he was quite young. Um, he was in his teens, but he'd already dropped out of school, ended up in the um, police force, border police. I had hired a tutor to help him take the officer test to become an officer. Uh, my dad was doing quite well, had his career in the police on the border between India and Pakistan. And he was enjoying his time in the police. He always spoke quite fondly of his time when he was in the police. He was able to do sports. He, you know, he was at quite a high standard when it came to his hockey, he was able to shoot. Apparently there's stories about him being able to shoot a bullet through, you know, um, through like cards, like a particular part of a card. They could point out, you take his AK or you take his Tommy gun and you're able to shoot one bullet straight through that particular part of the card. So there's all these crazy stories I hear about my dad when he was in the police and positive stories as well and how he taught himself to drive in the police, which is a whole nother story time and completely crazy actually I can't think about it, especially if I had done what he had done he'd have killed me. <laughs> so we have a lot of issues, something called Kabza, which is possession. Now, Kabza, it happens when literally someone comes along with their tractor, mows it, they come along with their mates and literally take over by force. Now, someone's about to take over that ground by force. The guy's name is Sawn Singh. He's quite known as being an aggressive guy in our village and, and quite intimidating. He had quite a big family, so whatever he wanted to do, he had like a massive group of supporters who'd come down with him, whether it meant beating people, robbing people, whatever it might be. One day, Sawn Singh got this idea that he was going to take over that community land 
and he was going to have it because it would have shown how tough a guy he was, how big a man he was. So the information of this had gotten back to my dad. Now bear in mind, my dad had left the police because my father had passed away and no one was willing really to take care of the family or the land that my grandfather had left the family so my dad was the youngest of four brothers and he stepped up to take responsibility that should have been taken on by the oldest brothers because we're very much a hierarchical type of culture so my dad went to start working the farm and something he told my mum a few times and I remember him hearing him say it was that he spent so much time on tractors and you know doing physical labor that when he'd get off the tractor he couldn't straighten his body up because he'd be on there for hours on them plowing land doing what he had to do and he was doing it all by himself so 21 year old guy looking after his family having to work physical labor always working hard someone comes along and tells him what's going on someone's seen showing up with a group of guys he's got his tractor out and he's about to plow the land to take possession of it so my dad rushed down to the field and this if you're ever in india and in particular in punjab you'll notice that rumors and information spread really quickly even pre-mobile phones right you didn't need a mobile phone everyone's like oh wow he's on his way down to the fields so everyone came down to see what was going to happen my dad was on his way to confront this guy said hey you're not taking the field because it's community use only anyway a massive argument broke out between my dad and this group of guys about them taking over the field so my dad said you know what seeing as they're not listening they're not doing anything he was gonna make a stand now my dad being a Sikh and if anyone knows about Sikhism, there's a big emphasis on you know, standing up for your right, even if it means dying for what you believe in, you do it. Um, my dad lay down in front of the tractor. Apparently he was literally under the wheel of the tractor. And what he said to the guy was, look, if you try and plow this land, you're gonna have to go through me. Now, what was really interesting about this was that even though the village were pretty much together, Sorn Singh, everyone else then started to follow suit who was around. So a lot of the young guys, so a lot of the other young guys and I got together and also then laid next to my dad and laid in front of the tractor to stop them from plowing the land. The reason why I'm telling you this story is because not only is this channel dedicated to my father, I try and keep the principles that I know he'd appreciated or would have appreciated um, to this channel. So the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is A, I kind of want to share something about my dad and also the principles of this channel. My dad was very much about his principles, as that story kind of told you, he was willing to literally die before he let someone bully and intimidate the village into giving something up that was of the village and you know he saw the value of having that particular community ground for the community for people to be able to play on and the thing that always takes me back is as a kid i remember playing on that ground never knowing and when i was a kid literally 100 odd boys were shot every day we played football then we played cricket I would normally hop over my best mate over the school wall and play football in the school grounds while everyone else played cricket outside and we play football with like a group of lads as well and it was crazy all that time i'll play football i'd play uh, marbles i'd you know have a wrestling match or have a fight with somebody on that ground because i was from abroad i was easy pickings essentially to them it never once i never once knew that that ground was so close to being taken and i never once knew my dad's role to be able to keep that ground for everyone in the village, for everyone within the community. When we used to have guys from other villages coming to play football, we were really proud of our ground, but yeah, our ground's better than your village's ground. And it's so crazy to me to now know that like, it was literally my dad stepping up that kept that alive for everyone. And all the benefit I had growing up there as a kid enjoying that ground the bragging rights, if you would, of our village be able to say, hey, look, this is our ground. We've got a bigger ground than yours. We've got more sports you know, that we could play here than you can at yours. That was thanks to my dad. I never once knew it. I knew a lot of people in the village had respect for him and held him in good, high regard. And every so often I hear stories as to why they held him in such respect and such high regard. But yeah, stories like this, to me, it's kind of crazy, like, young guy take care of his whole family was willing to sacrifice his life and put so much on the line to ensure everyone had use of that particular ground like as a person as a man i respect my dad a hell of a lot even more so for deeds and acts such as that um but yeah it's the story it's kind of personal to me and i kind of want to show you guys the cricket tournament because it was quite a big thing that was going on everyone had a great time there and this wasn't just our village, it wasn't just a couple of villages. Over th three days that the tournament was played in, they had about 120 villages who came by to play in that tournament. 
so it's quite a big tournament. Um, and it's mad, had my dad not done that, that tournament would have happened. All the stories I have from being a child in India, or so to spend time in India when I was there, playing in the field, none of that would happen. The friends that I made when I was a kid there, playing in those fields, that would never have happened. So it's crazy to me to kind of know that story. I kind of want to share with you guys that particular story so you kind of got a feel for my dad and the type of person who is very principled. Um, yeah, the head of a lot of principles. So yeah, I just kind of want to share that. And I'm sorry if it's not the greatest story ever and it's not the best story time ever. I've not done one of these before. It's tough for me right now, emotionally as well, trying to tell this story. Because I'm, you know, trying to... Yeah, I'm just trying to be okay and trying to get through this. Um, but I'm also trying to make it so that you guys can appreciate in terms of story, appreciate knowing a little bit more about my dad. And yeah, a little bit more about me, things that I appreciate and like. Because um, I know a few of you have been on me that I don't do story times and it's been a food channel and it's difficult to do story times around food. But I'm hoping that the channel's in a place where I can carry on focusing on food and my food journey but also at the same time I can try and do some other bits which make the channel more than just the food channel so I can share information, share stories um, and yeah hopefully there's some positive stuff and there'll be some stories coming up which might help people out there um, or you know some tips and guides and what, that kind of stuff which might actually be able to help people but yeah that's my first story time um, sorry if it was bad, sorry if it was rubbish, I apologise uh, I've never done this before and it's really strange when I talk about my dad um, to a camera which doesn't give anything back but a lens. I know you guys are back there. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to sign off and leave it there. Thank you for watching.